So today I'm going to be tinkering with a circuit that was uh, something that somebody on Reddit was asking about a few weeks ago. And when I took a look at it, it looked like an interesting circuit. So I figured I'd give it a play and just see what happens. The circuit is called the Simple Music Box Circuit. And the link that the guy on Reddit uh, sent goes to this page at Homemade Circuit Projects. It uses a couple of 555 timers and the good old 4017 decade counter which is you know a combination that we've seen time and again for instance this is the classic uh, 555 plus 4017 implementation just to chase 10 leds along the 555 is just busy clocking along quietly here and each time it clocks it uh, triggers this guy to go further along its sequence. When it gets to the end, it pops back. Very, very straightforward circuit, an excellent beginner circuit. And the one that we're looking at today takes this basic circuit and takes it one step further. So here on the left side is essentially what I had on the, on the breadboard. There is the 555. Pin 3 is the output. Pin 14 is the uh, clock input of the 4017. And the rest of it is just the power and stuff. But then the difference happens. On the output, we have a bunch of diodes. Uh, this thing says you can use pretty much any diode. I happen to be using Schottky diodes because I've got a bunch of them lying around. Um, and then there's a bunch of resistors all summed together on the output, which goes over to the second 555 timer. Now then, if you're familiar with using 555 timers in an A-stable multivibrator, aka just a straight-up oscillator setup, this is not exactly the standard version. This is over here. This is from the Forest Mims book, which we've uh, we've seen before. And if you haven't, I will put a link to it down below because it is an awesome classic resource. So. The classic circuit here uses two resistors and one capacitor. These two resistors can be replaced with a potentiometer with the wiper uh, coming out the middle here on pin seven. And the two resistors plus the capacitor are the timing elements. There's two times that happen here. One is basically based on R2 plus the capacitor and one is based on R1 plus R2 and then the capacitor. So as the capacitor charges and discharges like this, the two internal comparators that are on pins two and six uh, compare it to the threshold voltages that are set and trigger the internal flip-flop to flip or flop. Uh, and then pin seven is the discharge, which pulls this, to, this point here to ground and discharges the capacitor through the resistor. So that is this. And then once pins two and six hit the other threshold, the lower threshold, um, it flips the flip-flop again, because that's what flip-flops do. And it starts charging, this time through R1 and R2. But that's not how this little oscillator works. You've still got pins two and six tied together as usual, but pin three, the output, is tied through a single resistor. So as that goes high or low, it is controlling the charging and discharging of this capacitor through this one resistor. And then on the second one, so this one over here is acting as a clock that toggles the 4017 to just change outputs each time. So it's running at a relatively low speed. This one is running at a fairly high speed, an audio frequency speed. What it looks like is happening is as each of these outputs go high, it puts the uh, full VCC voltage through this resistor um, and then through this one. So this becomes the charge resistor and this one becomes a discharge resistor, theoretically anyway. And then all these three or all these resistors here are different values so that you get a different frequency out of your audio oscillator. And then this is just a straight up amplifier. I will link to this page, of course, down below. Here is the parts layout. I want to go and demonstrate uh, the two different oscillators just for a moment, and then we'll build this thing. So here is the, the two different 555 oscillator circuits I was talking about. They are almost identical. The only difference is this one over here is the one for this music box circuit, and it has one less resistor in it. 
Um, I'm just using potentiometers for both of them so that I get the speeds lined up for the demonstration here. But as you can see, you can change the speed of them just by adjusting the potentiometers. So this oscillator over here, the potentiometer is acting essentially as two resistors, one between VCC and pin seven, the discharge, and the other one between uh, VC or between the discharge VCC and the pin two, pin six, and capacitor set up, just like we saw in the Forest Mims book. This one, on the other hand, just has it set up as a single resistor. Note the other leg's not going anywhere. And that is just between pin three, the output, and pin two and six, the two threshold comp uh, comparators. So that's a little bit different, but I'm going to use actually both of these in the circuit that I build, just cause, just to show the general versatility of playing with 555s. Let me grab some parts and put this together and I'll be right back. Well, that took a little while to put together, but I've got it together and I decided to put a variable resistor in here. It might look like I've got two resistors in here, but they're both in series with each other. Um, they are as it shows on the, uh, on the web page, just between the output pin three and the threshold pin two and six, just, uh, put them in series just to give me a little bit, uh, lower speed going on anyway so that is the one that the circuit designer wanted here is the 4017 with all of the diodes coming out of the outputs and series resistors just like we had in the schematic uh, there are two of the 10 outputs that are not used because the guy that designed the circuit wanted a couple of rests in his musical output just for artistic reasons which is cool. And of course the different values of resistors are going to give us a different frequency on our audio oscillator, which is this one over here. Now this one is set up more like the classic forest MIM circuit. Um, it has the discharge resistor there. And then the charge resistor is essentially whichever one of these happens to be high at the moment. So let me plug in the speaker and assault your ears. And we can, of course, speed it up. No, we can't. We can slow it down. You can see each note with each flash here. So that's kind of cool. Quiet, you. So you could, you know, change those resistors to make any notes you want. Right now, there's only eight notes in use out of the ten in the sequence. So I guess he wanted to go with just normal musical stuff. So that's two bars of quarter notes, essentially yet another use for the five, 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 this time with a couple of them. I think you're probably uh, recognizing by now that the five, five, five is one of my most favorite chips out there. It's been around forever and it is just so damn versatile. There's so many things you can do with it. And I've only scratched the surface in the last few videos where I've been playing with it. Um, if you want to see me explore it further, oh, let me know in the comments. Far too loud. I didn't really need an amplifier, but the circuit called for one, so I threw it in there. Um, yeah, so this was fun. I do like playing with these things. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Questions, comments down below as usual. And for those of you wondering about the beer, this is Red Alert Red Ale from Full Geek Brew Lab in Winnipeg. They don't describe much about it other than just smooth and malty red ale, but there is a moderately humorous Star Trek inspired story on the back of the can. So that that's fun too. Anyway, um, yeah, that's everything for now. I'm out of here. Talk to you later.